Guys, thank you so much and welcome to this live stream. Hopefully it sounds a lot better. Uh, Josh, go ahead and step into frame and wave at everybody for me real quick. <laughs> He's like, peace, nooses. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching this second version of the stream. So if you are new to this particular video, we're going to go over a couple of different things. Guys, uh, thank you. Is that is that so, so so much better? Okay, so I am six foot three. I have to get that out of the way before we get the live stream started. Um, so in today's video, we're going to do a couple of different things. We are going to have a QA. and uh, a The way that that's going to work is that Q&A is going to be towards the end of this live stream. Uh, however, if you guys do happen to leave us a super chat, I'm going to do what I can to stop uh, the live stream and actually answer your question if it is a super chat. Uh, everything else, uh, what we'll do is we'll have a live Q&A that we can uh, do our best to answer those particular questions for you guys. Um, now, the other things that we're going to do before we get there, we're going to talk about the Bronco Raptor. And do we think it's actually worth $70,000? That's a lot of money. Uh, so we're going to be covering that and going to go over some specifics and, and some details on those Bronco Raptors as well. In addition to that, we're going to talk about the Bronco Everglades and kind of get my reaction. I've not publicly talked about the Bronco Everglades yet until this live video. So you want to make sure you stick in to, to catch what my opinion is. And there's some really cool quirks and features if you're a Doug DeMiro fan that you're going to want to see on that. And yes, I do have my legal pad so that way we can uh, make sure that we don't forget anything and cover everything in this live video. And then the last thing that we're going to talk about before we're getting into that Q&A is going to be the state of ordering Broncos right now. Where are you at? What's going on? Like, what can you expect? And things like that. So once again... Um, if you have any questions you want us to get to before we get to that Q&A, hit us up on that Super Chat. We'll be happy to take care of you guys. If not, uh, we'll have that Q&A later on. So anyways, let's talk about the Bronco Raptor. $70,000. Let me know in the comments. I'm very curious if you think $70,000 is a bargain or if it's a win or a fail, pass or fail uh, on the $70,000 Bronco if you think it is. I've got my opinions. I actually think that it is a, a a a good job. I think Ford did a good job with the engineering. Um, I said that in the the video that we made about it. I think those fender flares are atrocious. Um, that that is one of the many reasons that I built my Bronco out the way that I did is because I had a clue of how those fender flares were going to look. But I think that all of the technology, all of the capability, all of the, the hor extra horsepower with the bigger motor, by the way, it's got a 3.0 V6 twin turbo, and all of that together, I do think it is a good vehicle. And there's one thing's for sure, Ford's not going to have a problem selling them. Uh, I just wish that, that those, fo those fender flares kind of looked like they were a little bit more a part of the body instead of looking kind of like an afterthought. So... Um, now I, Mike Jones, actually, uh, how many are actually going to sell for 70,000 expect markup on these? I fully expect a lot of dealers to have markups, uh, but we've actually communicated to every one of our Bronco Raptor reservation holders, meaning that there was a hand raiser program that went out. Ford said, Hey, if you, uh, if you have a, a Bronco and you would like to be interested to consider for a Bronco Raptor, click here, um, out of every one of those Bronco Raptors, we are honoring MSRP on every last one of those. So uh, if you guys have a Bronco Raptor reservation with us, we got you. Uh, and you got a video proof that we're doing it as well, but we're also happy to put it in, in paper. But you're right, there's going to be a lot of... And now, I will go ahead and tell you that don't be calling our dealership and say, I want to swap my Bronco Raptor to your dealership because you're not... I don't know that Ford will allow us to transfer Bronco Raptor allocations. So there's no reason to call... It, I don't think Ford's going to allow any transfers. I might be wrong. If anybody at Ford is watching this video, and you guys probably are, correct me, but uh, I, I think it would probably be a waste of time um, to call up here to see if you can have it transferred. You can call Ford and see if they can, but we don't have any ability to swap reservations. But every one of our Bronco Raptor reservations, you get in that puppy at sticker. It's our way of saying thank you for holding on, <laughs> hanging in there for us. So anyways, let's get back to the motor. Let's get back to the technology and things like that. Um, 3.0 twin turbo, uh, estimated over 400 horsepower. Uh, it's going to be a great little engine. And I'm really excited about the technology that they've de debuted on the F-150 Raptor, kind of making it over in on the, the Bronco Raptor. Uh, things like the, um, the, the exhaust system, how you can change the, the way that that exhaust system sounds on the fly. That's pretty stinking cool. 
Uh, I really, really like the way that they are giving you the ability to customize your exhaust while you're driving down the road. That's one thing that I wish that I had. I mean, I've got a MagnaFlow on my Bronco, but it'd be nice to be able to hit the button and piss your neighbors off as you <laughs> as you choose. Actually, I love my neighbors, so I can't really say that, but you know what I mean. Next up, let's talk about how wide it is. So we've already talked about the fender flares and how I wish that they were a little bit more cohesive into the rest of the body panels, but um, I understand why Ra uh, Roush, what am I talking about? I, I guess I've got another video on my brain. They just debuted the 2022 Roush F-150, and I guess I've got that on my brain. I apologize. Um, but uh, the, the, the actual wide body on that Bronco is actually functional. So just like the F-150 Raptor, it has a wider suspension. It has a wider stance, and you have to, to stay 50-state compliant, you have to have coverings over those tires uh, because in Alabama, we don't care. We're just a bunch of good old boys, and we don't care how wide your tires are. But, you know, places like Pennsylvania, like my, my buddy from Autovlog, if you haven't ch checked out his channel, you need to do so. He's got a, an F-150 that we customized. Um, but uh, in in that state, in Pennsylvania, you legally have to have tire coverings over there. So uh, leave me some comments down below uh, whether your state requires coverings over the tires, but in Alabama, we don't. Um, uh, so, GB, am I too late for Mitchell to say he's six foot three? I just said it. <laughs> I'm six foot three. Uh, but no, you did miss it, but welcome to the live stream. We appreciate that. Uh, the other thing that I, I really like about the Bronco Raptor is that interior. That thing is gorgeous. Uh, the, the extra bolsters that you get in the seat, so that way as you're sliding around or kind of coming high speed off roading, you, and you do it with the doors off. You're not worried if your butt's going to slide out of the seat and you're going get, to get run over by your own car. Uh, so I think that is is, is pretty cool um, that they've got that. The interior, oh, 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 the instrument cluster. Having that full LCD screen inside that instrument cluster is something that I wish my Bronco had. Um, I understand why they reserved it for that, but the normal Bronco it, has got the normal uh, tachometer, not tachometer, speedometer, it shows you in like normal, and then you got the LCD off to the side. Or I guess since I don't know if this is backwards, but um, yeah, you, you it's you got them side by side. It's kind of a mixture of analog and digital. The Raptor is all digital, and it's pretty stinking cool. So um, yeah, that's pretty sweet. You also have uh, 37s from the factory. I think that's the only vehicle in its segment to ever offer 37. It's the largest tire ever offered in in, in that specific segment. Um, so yeah, it's it's. It's pretty sweet. I, I would say that it is absolutely worth the $70,000, assuming you can find it in MSRP. I have something, like in my head, I can't, I can't justify spending something, uh, spending over MSRP for something. Um, but sometimes if, if someone has more money than they have patience, that might be a good use of money. And some people do that. I mean, some people pay way too much for a set of Super Bowl tickets. I mean, what's the difference? It's just a, on a much, 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 much higher level. <laughs> so, um, so is there going to be a V8 in the Raptor Bronco? There is not. It's going to be a 3.0 twin-turbo V6 motor. Now, that motor is basically like a bored-out version of the 2.7. That's a really bad way of explaining it. But it is a, a motor that is found on some of the higher levels uh, of vehicles, like in the Lincolns and, and things like that. I think it's also in the Explorer ST and then the Edge ST. I'm, I might be wrong on the Edge ST, and I might be wrong on those, but it is a vehicle. It's, it, that vehicle, or that engine, is found in other vehicles in Ford's lineup, and it is available to uh, uh, you know across, outside of the Bronco Raptor. You have to look at the horsepower to weight. I think it's going to be a good horsepower to weight ratio, especially for that particular vehicle. All right. Um, so uh, Larry McDaniel, can't wait for my Badlands I ordered from you, Mitchell. Bro, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I don't get a chance to talk to every one of our reservation holders um, because we just got a lot of people. And so uh, thank you. This is my opportunity to say thank you to every single one of you guys that have ordered a Bronco from us. Um, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and jump into the Everglades. I'm excited about this one because this is one I've not made a video on. And so you guys are getting my live take on a on the Bronco Everglades before you even had a chance to see. So I'm, I'm very curious... Um, oh, somebody had a really good question. Two-door or four-door or both? So the Bronco Raptor and the Everglades are both going to be available in one configuration. It's going to be a four-door. 
and I think I know why. It's a couple of different reasons. There's probably an engineering reason, but at the end of the day, statistically speaking, way more people order the four-door than they do the two-door because the people that buy Raptors, like F-150s, they even got rid of the Super Cab in the Raptor F-150. And the reason for that is because a lot of these people that are buying these Raptor variants, they're business owners, they're people that have got um, a, a, a good amount of income, and they are looking for a vehicle that they can take their clients to lunch in, they can take their family you know, out on the town, they can take their wife on a date, what have you. And that's kind of the reason that that four-door, more people buy the four-door. And so there's no reason to double your engineering cost by having a two-door and a four-door variant. It is extremely expensive to re-engineer everything for a two-door when primarily you're ordering a four-door. So I get it from Ford's sake on why. So anyways, um, and by the way, if you guys see me looking down, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the chat. I'm not texting or anything. I didn't want y'all thinking like, what's he looking at? Is he looking off into next month? Uh, so that that's what I'm doing over here. All right, so back to the Everglades. All right, do I have opinions on this? Why did they only allow it to be in a 2-3? What? <laughs> so the, the Everglades, in my opinion, was a home run across the board until I saw that. 2-3 only. I actually like the 2-3. I've driven plenty of them. We did the Roush... Uh, the Roush version of the Bronco that we customized, uh, it had the 2.3, and it was turning 35s, no problem. Uh, this one's going to have the Sasquatch package, so you're going to have the 4.7 gearing. It's got nice low gearing. you got a good, strong transmission in that 10-speed that will make sure that everything's in the right gears. And, you know, the... The thing is, is that you got, uh, oh, GB, uh, Michigan Assembly will shut down all of July to retool for Raptor. That's going to be interesting. Um, and I saw that comment as I was talking, and I got so excited that I completely uh, I completely just lost what my train of thought was. But the, the Everglades is only going to be available in the 2.3 liter. Now, I've got my, my, my theories. I don't have any insider information on pretty much any of this. Uh, this is just what I can gather from um, the, the forums and the, the news articles and things like that. Um, because, I, one, if I had insider information, which I don't, I would never share that because I don't want to uh, upset anybody uh, at Ford Motor Company and then them cut us, cut our allocation which would in turn hurt you guys, the ones that have or vehicles ordered with us. So anyways, I'm not going to, uh, if, even if I don't have any information, but if I did, I wouldn't share it. Um, but my suspicion, suspicion, I don't even know if that's a word. My suspicion is that, that they selected the 2.3 liter only for the Everglades for a primary reason of that's what Ford can build more of. Now, from what I can tell in all of the, these online forums is that that the 2.7 is a little bit more popular than the 2.3, and that there's a little bit of a deficit, meaning that they can build more 2.3s than they can the 2.7s at this current time. And what I mean by that is in ratio to what people are ordering. So the national, how many people are ordering, or what people are ordering, versus nationally what they can produce, they got to make sure that those numbers are about in line. And I have a feeling that's one of ways Ford is going to try and kind of correct that, if you will. Now, Here's what's so cool about the, the Everglades. This is, this is interesting. The Everglades is only available in a mid-package. So if you're familiar with the mid-package, it comes with uh, the mid-level content, like the, the heated seats, and it comes with you know the 8-inch touchscreen with Sync 4 and the wireless Apple CarPlay, but it's an 8-inch screen. Um, uh, okay, so we got a hey, Ralphie. Thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, will the Everglades be as limited as the Raptor Bronco? So that is a great question. I don't know the exact answer to that, but Ford has very clearly said that it is going to be a limited production, very limited in production, uh, that it is going to be something that you, it's going exclusively to re, uh, reservation slash order holders. Uh, at first time I read the communications from Ford, it I thought I read that reservation holders only, but it looks like that if you've got an existing order, whether it was a reservation or order, that, that you are eligible. Now, I will tell you in full disclosure, I don't know any insider information, and I may be wrong. 
And so, once again, if Ford's watching, they don't have the ability to, to chime in. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the interesting thing about that is, yeah, let, let, let's, you know, let's, just, let's just move on. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so, okay, so going back to the mid-package, the, the Everglades has got a mid-package, which, you know, normally is reserved with an 8-inch touchscreen. But the Everglades only comes with a 12-inch touchscreen. So a fun fact is, is that the Everglades is the only Bronco, period, that you can get a mid-package and a 12-inch touchscreen. How neat is that? It's, it's very unique on how that works. Um, so anyway, so that, that's pretty interesting. Um, now the other thing is, is the Everglades has got a couple of different colors, you know, and it's very limited on the number of colors that are available. It's things like the Eruption Green, uh, a couple of others, but they've introduced a very limited color, which is called Desert Sand. And I think that's the one that they're using in all of the different um, marketing and, and all of the different advertisements. And it looks pretty stinking cool. I love that. Um, now, there's two things, in my opinion, that make the Everglades an absolute win. Above and beyond the issue of it's only available in a 2-3 when I think they should have given us a choice. Um, but I... I think it's dang cool that they give us a winch from the factory, factory installed. Now, that same winch, that exact same part number, uh, you can't see it, but um, right there, there is a two pallets, and I've got two of those exact same part numbers available to put on your Bronco right now. So, I mean, it's, it's a part that is currently available uh, on any Bronco with a heavy-duty modular front bumper, but uh, it's neat to see it from the factory, an OEM uh, version with that winch. I just think it's cool that it came from the factory installed that way. But the real thing is going to be that snorkel. So from what I can tell on this snorkel um, is that not only is it designed to give you better water fording, and I do, think it does like 36.4 inches. Please don't quote me on that because I'm going off that by the top of my head. Um, and so I may be wrong, but 36.4 inches. I do remember reading this, though. Um, in preparation for the video that I have not put out yet, is that it does like three inches more of water fording more than the Sasquatch. That doesn't sound like a whole lot. And then when you measure out, like from the floor on a Sasquatch, um, you measure from the floor to 36.4 inches up, uh, you're getting water all up in your seat, like on your butt, which is... <laughs> So it kind of gives you a new perspective of how deep that thing can absolutely go. Uh, and then the other cool thing is you've got the marine grade vinyl, which by the way, let's take a step back and talk about the Bronco Raptor. That's one thing that I found out as well is that the Bronco Raptor is available with that upgraded seat that we talked about, but the Bronco Raptor can also get the marine grade vinyl, which I'm super, super excited to see that as well. So um, anyway, so that's, that's kind of what, uh, what we're looking at there. Um, but by far, my favorite thing about the, the Everglades version of the Bronco are the squared off fender flares. If you haven't had a chance to go through and look at it, you need to go back and look at it because the whole reason that I did what I did with my Bronco, which by the way, if you haven't seen it, we did uh, advanced fiberglass concepts. We did wide body kit on my Bronco where it's got a two inch flare and a one inch rise and it gives us kind of more like that aggressive look to it. Um, the, the fact that you've got that same squared off look on the advanced fiberglass, you've got a very similar look to the, the Bronco Everglades. I think it looks absolutely amazing um, because you have that ability to just have that nice squared off look. You still have the removable fender flares is what it appears to be anyways. Uh, and I just really think that that looks really, really nice on the Bronco. I don't know what it is about those squared off look. The round is great. Nothing wrong with it. I'm not like mad about it, but it is really nice to see that, that squared off look on that Bronco Everglades. So let me know down in that chat right there because I am actively going back through and looking at it. Um, let me know what you think about the Everglades. Do you think it's a win, a fail? Is that something that you guys are interested in trying to get? Um, I would assume that Ford would do it very similar how they do with the um, the Bronco Raptor, is that they're going to probably have a hand... I don't know. Once again, I don't have any insider information, but they're probably going to do a hand raiser selection program, and then based on the reservation timestamps, they'll probably allow people to, to uh, select which ones they you know, are going to get the Everglades. 
I do believe you're going to get a few more Bronco Everglades than you will the Raptor. Um, I, it's just that something about Raptors always extremely limited in production. Um, <clears throat> and, and I actually haven't talked about this with my business partner uh, before this video, but I'm going to go ahead and step out there on a, on a limb. And I'm going to say if you've got a Bronco order <clears throat> with, the, with us on an Everglades, we will also honor MSA, MSRP pricing on all of those as well. So I guess I'm making a large announcement in this video today is that 100% of our Broncos uh, reservation slash orders are sold at MSRP, even the specialty ones. So at least can I get a, a W for win in the chat down below? <laughs> Maybe at least. So um, yeah, I think the Everglades is a win. Uh, I just, one minor thing, I wish you'd have given us the opportunity for 2-7, but I get it. I, I also understand both sides. All right, so we are going to have a Q&A, uh, but that's not going to happen yet. So keep hammering out the, the comments because I am looking at these as I'm talking to you guys. Um, but we are going to actually go through and have a dedicated Q&A after this next section. We're going to talk about uh, the state of actually ordering vehicles uh, and primarily Broncos as well. Um, what a weird time we live in. <laughs> I never in my 21 years of being here, Town & Country Ford slash TC Customs, um, <laughs> the win is my haircut. Man, thank you, man. I actually got a cut yesterday. I uh, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I'm just glad it's not falling out. That's all I got to say. It is receding a little bit, but <laughs> anyways. Um, it, 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 let me take a set, stop for a second and just say thank you guys because um, I feel very blessed to, that anybody actually has cares what we have to say or what we think. And I hope it shows on camera that I, I'm, not a, um, I'm not a salesperson by heart. I just, I love cool cars, first and foremost, and then I love people. And although I am not in sales here, um, I'm just very glad that you guys are along for this ride. And I know I don't want to get sappy or sentimental, but I never in my wildest dreams thought we would have, you know, 250,000 subscribers as a car dealership um, slash a custom shop. And the fact that any of you guys actually want to hear what we have to say, man, thank you guys very, very, very much. And I'm seeing all the love in the in the in the chat, and it just it's it's a little overwhelming to say the least. But it's I'm I'm just grateful. Um, thank you guys for watching this video, um, and to, thank you for because I know some of y'all are some OGs, and I am curious because I'm actively looking at this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> G Willikers, I'm only six two with a haircut. No, they didn't cut as much off the top. It's all off the side. <laughs> okay, that was that was that was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So uh, I kind of got distracted there. Um, I do want to step into the state of ordering Broncos specifically. What's going on? Like everybody's seen these pictures on the on the forums uh, here and there. Let's set that water down to the side. I got another one just ready because I got to stay hydrated. Um, okay, so I do have to answer this one because a lot of people get really confused. Um, GB Mitchell, uh, by the way, dude, I appreciate all you've done. I'm not going to put it on YouTube video or on live video, what all you've done for us, but thank you very, very much. And thank you very much for your support too, man. Uh, I see just about everything you do and say, but, uh, he wrote, uh, Mitchell, what is your official title at TC Ford? Um, general manager, co-general manager is the technical title, um, partner, a little bit of everything. So, uh, I kind of look at it the is I'm I'm the the lead running around in circles man. <laughs> so I've got Kyle Sane, uh, he is my business partner. I've got Billy Sane. Uh, those two guys don't like the cameras, but they are some of the most unbelievable businessmen out there, and they do a great job uh, of managing the the business when I'm talking to you guys. Uh, so, anyways, that's uh, thank you very much, GB. We appreciate you. Hopefully, that answers your question. But technically, it's co-general manager. Uh, alongside Billy and Kyle. So I don't like talking about that, by the way, just because I feel weird. If that if that makes any sense to you guys, I don't know. I don't know why I feel weird about that. I just, I feel weird. I, I'm over here doing the Q&A session before the Q&A session. See, I'm not good at this live video stuff. But no, um, uh, the Ford GT is good, by the way. So... Valley dude, it's fantastic. It we it, it actually won some awards at the local World of Wheels. So, 
Um, yeah, anyways, uh, let's let's get back on topic. I know I'm bouncing all over the place, and I need to wait until we actually have the Q&A. But once again, I'm going to get back into the state of ordering Broncos. If you guys want a question answered before we get to the, que the Q&A or guaranteed want me to answer the question, uh, leave us a super chat down below, and I will guaranteed get to that question. The state of ordering Broncos. Um, let's Before we talk about where we are right now, let's talk about how we got here and what the actual problems are. Uh, now, I've got music playing in the background, and I have no idea if this microphone can catch it, so I've got to get on my phone and turn the music off. So pardon me one second while I do that, because I don't want to get hit for copyright on YouTube. All right, so what it boils down to is there's a, a slew of different things that have happened all at one time. So let's back all the way up to when the COVID shutdowns were happening. You had um, Ford Motor Company was focused in on making ventilators for the U.S. government and for these hospitals. And then you had uh, Ford produced, there's no telling how many face masks, which by the way, those face masks were probably the, some of the best face masks out there um, at the time. And they, they were focused in, and as well as everybody was, they were focused in on trying to get what we thought at the time was the most important thing taken care of, which was COVID. And this is not a political channel. We don't talk about politics here. Uh, I'm not going to start today. Um, but I, I firmly believe that everybody in the world's shift from, hey, let's completely shut down the manufacturing side and let's focus in on this, that had some repercussions to it. Um, I think that kind of caused us to get behind the eight ball a little bit. And then, you know, a part of that was you also had a lot of different people that were sent home. And so since they were sent home, they, the, the number of people that bought consumer electronics shot through the roof. Well, consumer electronics have something in them called microchips. And so what happened is since you had cars not being produced and you had consumer electronics devices were being sold and purchased at a record rate, these microchips were going to these people, you know, to these companies that were producing all of these consumer electronic devices. And in addition to that, you also have microchips are can be very different depending on what the application is. So, you know, like this this iPhone, I don't know how many how many microchips are in this, by the way. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. You see that, you see that uh that is actually a wallpaper that I downloaded from a buddy of mine's site called badbronco.com. Go ahead and check that out. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, he's, got, uh, he's got those Skull Bronco logos or emblems you can put on the back of your vehicle. Uh, but I don't know how many microchips are in this iPhone. Uh, I would guess probably 13, 14. Um, and GB, if you're still here, let me you know, chime in. But my understanding is that a normal Ford vehicle can have 2,000, 3,000 microchips in one vehicle. When you multiply that by how many vehicles Ford produces on an annual basis, uh, you know, when they're going back and they're blowing and going, um, you know, they, they were probably producing seven, 800,000 F-150s. Times that by 2,000 microchips, that's a lot of microchips. But the microchips that are in these vehicles are the older technology of microchips. The reason for that is because vehicles are not updated every single year like consumer electronics are. So you've got an older, less profitable microchip for Intel or whoever the microchip manufacturer is for these cars. Or you can go with the higher profit, um, higher volume microchips that are going in these consumer electronics devices like the the, uh, the this laptop that I'm using. Which one are you going to use if you're the microchip company? Well, we, I, I think you kind of know the answer to that. Um, and then what what you have in and on top of that is you had Ford's main microchip manufacturer completely caught on fire. Well, uh, so you can go to a different manufacturer. You can't really just go to a new manufacturing facility because a microchip is very finely tuned, and very precisionly built. Uh, it takes very skilled labor, very skilled robots, and by the way, those robots that make the microchips, robots require microchips to, to operate. So it's kind of it's kind of a weird thing. Uh, basically, Ford has said Bronco is primary. We get the uh, we get the most chips out of out of any plants. 
I believe you wholeheartedly because Ford realizes that they've got to produce for these vehicles that were um, that were reserved back in 2020, July 13th of 2020. Um, I have that date memorized in my head. Um, but yeah, you've got all of those different things that kind of just perfect storm, if you will, kind of came together. And now it's just a severe microchip shortage. Um, then when you put that on top of other things, like that's why customers have said that, Hey, I want a Lux package. Uh, GB can probably tell you better than I can, um, because he actually works at the plants, but at the Bronco plant, the Lux package has adaptive cruise control. It has Bang & Olufsen audio system. It has a wireless car charger, wireless phone charger for your, for your, you know, in your car. Um, it has a, a USB port on the top. Every one of those things requires what? More microchips. And that's one of the reasons that I believe that it's more difficult for Ford to produce the Lux package. Um, so it, it's not just like a hard top issue. You've got microchips. You've got hard top. Um, you've got just other supplier issues. You know, think about this. Like if, if the, the company that produces the, the heavy duty modular front bumper, let's say that they get a string of COVID in their plant and they have to shut down for two weeks. Well, that's two weeks worth of lost production. That's why you might get an email that says, Hey, your Bronco schedule for production has changed. Uh, it might be something along those lines, uh, because, Ford uses what they call just-in-time manufacturing, meaning the parts show up just in time to put them on the vehicle. And uh, so that's, that's very, very issue, uh, interesting. Uh, so our latest issues have been TCU's traction control unit and BCM's body control modules not being built for us fast enough. You know, that's, that's a good point. And guess what each one of those require? Microchips. <laughs> so, uh, you know, case in point, that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, now, now let's, let's, I'm, I want to talk about the next thing is the production numbers. Um, this information is all found publicly. I'm not sharing anything private from Ford Motor Company. I found this on bronco6g.com and fordauthority.com. So I'm not sharing any insider information, but according to an article on fordauthority.com that, and this was, by the way, this was months ago, there was 125,000 Bronco orders in the system. Now, according to Bronco 6G, they that in December of 2021, they produced 9,200 Broncos. Well, if you do the math on that, if Ford doesn't take another order for another Bronco, it's going to take them over 13 months to catch up on those numbers. If I'm half wrong. <laughs> so, you know... The, the the supply and the demand is really the issue. It's not that Ford is incompetent, because they're not. There are some really smart people that work there uh, that understand manufacturing in a way that I would never understand. It's literally just a perfect storm, and it's what happens when you make a product that is so revolutionary at the same time that there is a world shutdown called COVID. And so that's kind of what, what you've got there. Now, last thing I want to talk about commodities and things that I'm noticing that is holding up builds. If I get this question once a day, I get it a hundred times a day. Um, and that is, how can I get my Bronco sooner? How can I know when I can expect to get my Bronco? And I'm just going to tell you the same thing that I tell my customers every single, um, uh, every single day is... If you are interested in ordering a Bronco and you're more concerned about time frame than you are with getting the exact op options that you want, this is how you need to order your Bronco. You need to consider the lowest trim level that you could possibly stand. So if you if you want to get it faster, now once again, if you just say, hey, I want what I want, that's cool. Just do what, do what, do what you want to do. But if you're asking me how to get it built faster, this is how you do it. You take the Bronco and you consider the least expensive trim that you can consider. If that's a base model, get a base model. If it's a big bend, get a big bend. Uh, if you've got a Badlands and you'd be willing to consider a black diamond because of the marine grade vinyl, do that. Um, if you're looking at outer banks, you want to go down to, basically go to the lowest trim level that you can possibly stand. And then you need to go to the package that you can, the lowest package you can possibly stand. So, for instance, if you've got a, a Badlands Lux, 
uh, you need to consider going with the Badlands High or Badlands Mid. You need to consider that lowest package that you can consider. Uh, if you're on a big bend, you might want to consider, uh, actually on a big bend, that's a bad example. It doesn't matter which one, but uh, I say it doesn't matter. It does matter, but not nearly as much as going with like a, an Outer Banks. If you can do an Outer Banks, you know, high package instead of the Lux package, that's going to make a difference. So consider the lowest trim level, consider the lowest package you can, and then if the options that you're looking at is not a deal breaker, you need to leave it off. That is what I'm telling If it is, it is uh, so my personal Bronco has eight of the 11 constrained <laughs> items. I know, I, yeah, it's, my goal there is, is that if you don't have to have a hard top, get the soft top. It will significantly speed up the order. That's causing the biggest issue from what I can tell. Once again, I don't have any insider information. It's just from what I can tell and from what, what I can piece together. Hard top is still the number one issue. Um, then the, I would say that the trailer tow package is probably tied with the paint protection film. You need to consider leaving both of those off. So um, consider having the, the, the trailer wiring and the trailer, install, the trailer tow package um, installed from a dealer level, if that's something that you can get by with. Or if you're like, you know what, I'm just using it for my bike rack, order the, the actual hitch. I've got like 26 of those Bronco accessory hitches that are ready to... Um, to be installed on the aftermarket side at any point in time. Consider doing that. Um, so I, you need to leave off the tow package. You need to leave off the, the Lux package. You need to leave off um, the basically everything that's fun, leave it off. <laughs> or consider leaving it off. I'm even going so far as recommending to my customers that if you don't have to have the floor liners from the factory, leave those off. Because you know what? I've got 40 sets of floor liners in my parts department right now that because I'm telling all of our customers, hey, I don't think that a, a Bronco build is going to get held up or not get scheduled because you've got floor liners in there, but it ain't helping. Because the way that that system works is the system, Ford's scheduling system, looks at every single order in their ordering bank. And they go first off of, does the dealer have any allocation left? And I can't, I'm not legally allowed to tell you how many allocations publicly, so I'm not going to be doing that tonight. But um, they say, does the dealer have any allocation left? If they do, then lo we look at the commodities. And then they go off the reservation timestamp. Let me translate for you. It's all about what Ford can build. And so you've really got to do yourself a favor and put yourself in the best possible situation where the, where the, the computer system that does the scheduling actually looks at it and says, okay, this is the easiest one to slide through the system. There you go. <laughs> uh, pray and hope. Yes, that's that's kind of kind of how you have to do is rip all the options you can, then pray and hope <laughs> that you get scheduled for production. Um, so anyways, you know, there, there is a lot of really good ways to, to look at possibly speeding up your Bronco, but the easiest one is, is if it's not a deal breaker item, go as cheap as you possibly can. And if you've got a reservation or an order with us, reach out to your salesperson. Those orders come into me and they come into my business partner. We'll get those orders revised for you and changed. Uh, because realistically, you know, if you that is the single-handedly most important thing. Now, someone had a really good question. Do you think that priority code still means anything for Broncos? So for those of you guys that don't know, when you place an order for a Ford vehicle, it asks you for a priority code. That priority code basically is Ford's way of saying that if you have two vehicles that are identical in the system, which one do you want to go first? If you want it to uh, attend, you know, so like for instance, a retail order is a 10 through a 19. And the idea there is, um, let's say you have two customers. They both order big bins. They or both order zero options. They both order the same color. Literally identical vehicles. One gets a priority code 10. One gets a priority code 11. It's way, the, the lower the priority, the number, the more important it is. Uh, so it means I, wanna, I want number 10 to go first. Then I want a number 11 to go next. I want number 12 to go next. Um, I, so, so that's what a priority code is. Is It tells Ford's system which one you want to be built first. I don't know, but I don't think that that has anything to do with it. 
I've had a lot of customers tell me, oh, I want my 10 changed to a 19. Not a problem. We'll change them to a 9, to a 10. But what's really holding you back, sir, is that you've got a Lux package with <laughs> Badlands with uh, every option under the sun. And by the way, why did you put tube doors on it as an accessory from Ford? You know, you need to leave that off if you want your Bronco in a reasonable time frame. Um, and so, so make sure that, that you consider leaving off every option that is not a deal killer. And then, yeah, I put it as a priority code 10, but I don't think that's going to cause anyone to... Well, let me give you an example. My personal Bronco that I have right now, um, I left it as a priority code 19, and it was a very, very early build. Now, the reason for that is because I went with a soft top. I went with... Um, uh, zero options. I had a literally a Badlands Lux zero options and, and and with a soft top. And I know people are like, well, you got a Badlands Lux. I want a Badlands Lux. What people don't realize is that if you you uh, I have a really early reservation date, and they might be ten or fifteen days behind the reservation opening. What they don't realize is that that your dealership might have had six hundred reservations ahead of you, and if they've only got seventy or eighty allocations for this year. They're not going to build your vehicle if you've got so many constrained items against you. Um, <laughs> uh, Mitchell's hoarding all the parts. I'm not hoarding all the parts, although uh, I don't know if you guys can see that over there. I don't know if that's, uh, it might be out of view, but uh, this is F-150 related, not Bronco related, but we just got a shipment of Whipple superchargers for the Bronco. So 775 horsepower, if you want to check that out on our website. Uh, for your bra for your F-150, um, uh, I don't think I can leave a link down below. But um, so Eric uh, Eric says so to get so you need to get a four base four door with soft top and a two three. Yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. If you do that, you have your best chance of getting scheduled as fast as possible. The more options you leave off, the easier it is for Ford to slide those things in there. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, that is pretty much it in a nutshell for the uh, state of ordering Broncos. Um, now let's just go ahead and open it up to the Q&A session. So go ahead and start firing off, and I will do my best to answer any and all questions that you guys have. Specifically, let's keep it Bronco related. So, will the Raptor ever be released as a two-door version? I highly doubt that it will because of the amount of extra research and development needs to go into it as far as a cost is concerned. We actually covered that a little bit earlier in the video. Uh, can you get an F-150 built quicker than a Bronco? Absolutely you can. Once again, just like the Bronco, depends on how you order it. If you're going to be very picky and specific, it's going to be hard to get anything built right now. Um, ordered a four-door Badlands with a molded in color top, Sasquatch, Lux, etc. on 10, 19, 21. Uh, strapped in to not get it until the end of this year or the earliest. Yeah, I will wish you good luck because I don't think <laughs> it's going to be it's gonna be a minute. Um, so let's see here. Could I, do I think the roof rack delays? Uh, rack being redesigned for 22. I don't know the answer to that question. I'm not afraid to admit when I don't know something. I don't know something. Should a reservation holder that was not selected to purchase a Raptor keep the original build, and attempt to order a Raptor next month. Uh, no, I don't think that'll help you at all because the, the Raptors are so limited in production. They're basically, you're going to have to find a dealer that had a customer that had an allocation that decided they didn't want one. And just I think if you didn't get that email, you're kind of S-O-L. <laughs> that makes any sense. Um, all right, so let's skip down to... Blaza Maniac, any ballpark guesses on the cost of the future hardtop as an accessory? No, I do not. But I do know what um, advanced fiberglass concepts, uh, one of the reasons I put their fenders on my truck was to kind of get my foot in the door with them on the hardtop. And so they have two hardtops coming available. I think they start at $52.50 uh, for a hardtop. They've got a couple of different options on the aftermarket. You can get them in black, you can get them in white, and you can get them in unpainted primer. Or you can paint them whatever color you want. So that's what I'm probably going to end up doing myself. Hennessy is building out 200 Bronco Raptors here in Texas. Uh, that will make for, for uh, I, I don't know, will that make Ford produce more Bronco? No, that's not going to change Ford's number. Ford's number is Ford's number. Um, yeah, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Um, is anyone running 37s with the 2-3? I don't know that I've seen a 2-3 with the 37s. Um off the top of my head, I'm sure we have. We've had a lot of Broncos come through here. 
Uh, we had like 112 allocations for 2021 model Bronco. Um, uh, tea time, I sure wish TC Customs was closer to Utah. We wish we were closer to Utah. Y'all got a beautiful state. Um, and we'd love to help you in any way that we can. What is your guesses on my arrival on a base Badlands? That depends on your reservation time as well. So if you literally say base, no options, no options, no options, then you got to look at your reservation time stamp. Um, and, and that's when it's start to become real. Let's see here. Uh, so John Hines, how many Raptors do you think Town & Country Ford will receive our dealership uh, that are not tied to a reservation holder? Um, basically to sell, none. Every single customer, we've already reached out to them. Everybody wants them. Um, so no, there's not going to have any available on the lot show up. Uh, unfortunately, I wish so, but uh, will we ever see a painted roof from factory? Ford was originally saying that a painted modular, black, like black painted modular hardtop was going to be available uh, in 23 model of the year, but that has been a, a while since I've heard Ford talk about that. So I don't know, maybe that, that's dropped. Maybe they, they've kind of gone silent on that, but who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll come through, but um, yeah, I, I will. If, I, if you're really dead set on factory and you're really dead set on paint, I'd just say paint it yourself. Um, we plan on doing a couple of, uh, of other ones as, as well. So um, let's see here. Will some Raptor parts come out for the standard Bronco, such as the tail light, tailgate reinforcement or removable fog lights? Uh, typically, no. What Ford does is to keep the integrity of the vehicle together, they typically limit the parts by increasing the cost obscenely um, case in point if you want a, a normal f-150 raptor wheel it's like 1300 bucks for one wheel um, what they're trying to do is keep people from trying to make a raptor um, and keep it to where just basically the only way you're getting a new wheel is if you you know oem wheels if you get in an accident something like that uh, so once again if you're just joining this video this live video we are doing a Q&A on anything specifically you guys want to talk about yeah let's just go ahead and open it up it's any questions you want to ask. I don't care what it is. Fire away. If it's a good question and I can get to it, I will get to it. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, when will the slide-out tailgate be available? I don't know the answer to that question. I do know that it is going to be a late availability option. So um, if that's something that you're wanting for your Bronco, you need to priority code 99 your build. Uh, or actually, no, I think you can actually add it now in the web, though. So you can actually go web-based dealer ordering. I forget some people don't know what the acronym is. Um, but you need to reach out to your dealer, make sure it's added to your order. If it's not added to your order, make sure your priority code is 99. That's Ford's way of saying, do not build this Bronco. So um, let's see here. Should I put my order in hopes of an Everglades? Um, I would go ahead and put you an order in, in hopes of an Everglades, but just be prepared that if you just now getting in line, you're probably not going to get one. Just being very transparent. Uh, ben, you have a great question. I've not been asked this before. How tall am I? Uh, I am six foot three. Actually, I'm between six two and six four, but sitting down, I'm a little shorter. So, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Looking to get new wheels on my Gen Three Raptor. What's the, uh, the stock backspacing on an OEM wheel? Uh, every wheel is different. I don't have that one memorized. Uh, but if you give our TC Customs Department a call tomorrow, they're already closed. Yeah, they're already closed for the day. Uh, but give them a call tomorrow, um, basically anytime from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., 205-491-0010. Uh, uh, they will not only get you the, the OEM offset, but they will also be happy to uh, get you a new set of wheels, and we also price match. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, waiting for my, uh, Eric says, waiting on my Maverick to come in. Should I hold on to my 2019 Ranger Super Crew Lariat or turn it in when the lease ends? Uh, so here's a cool thing about Ford Motor Company, Ford Motor Credit, really, um, is I've heard some stories that if you call Ford Credit and say, hey, I got this lease and I got this vehicle in order and my lease is going to be up before, can I get an extension? I've heard some success stories that they will let you pay like a, you have to sign something, obviously, but you can extend it and actually get kind of like a, basically like a month to month uh, lease extension. So that's pretty cool. So check in with Ford Motor Credit and see if they can help you with that. Uh, is there a way you can still get in line for an F-150 Lightning? Not that I'm aware of. So the reservations have been pulled down 
and we cannot place a new order in the system. Um, I'm not allowed to talk about allocation numbers, even though I know my allocation numbers. It's not good. It's not nearly enough. Um, and everybody is pretty much the same way. Hey, Eric, bro, thank you so much for that super chat. We appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. When do you think the February, uh, 28th February build week Broncos will ship out? So there's a, that's a great question uh, that leads into another question I'm going to answer as well. So it depends on a couple of different things. Um, what you need to do is you need to take your VIN number and give it to your dealer and let them do what they call a vehicle visibility. That is their way of being able to see what is holding up the vehicle. You can see if it's a microchip on hold. You can see where it is in the process. You can see everything that's going on there. So assuming your vehicle does not get delayed uh, and assuming that it does not get hit with microchip shortages, they usually ship out pretty quick, you know, within a couple of weeks. Uh, so GB, um, oh, there you go. I mean, that's the community helping out the community. GB, thank you very much. He's going to uh, reach out and uh, get that VIN and see if he can possibly help you out. So um, that's, man, that's awesome. That That's that's why I love y'all. Um, so so that, that's what it boils down to is that's a great question. Uh, GB, hopefully uh, you can help him out with that. But uh, it depends on a couple of different things. Uh, you also want to make sure that they go through the proper steps to get everything inspected uh, and make sure that it goes through the proper steps before it actually ships out. Uh, I'll tell you that the shipping times actually are not that bad. It's the making sure that the vehicle passes inspection and doesn't get hit with a microchip shortage. That's what you've got to stay away from. Um, John Hines said, lightning allocations in the South are very, very poor. That is a correct statement. <laughs> uh, thankfully, Ford is going to be, uh, and they are spending a lot of money, like billions with a B, uh, in building more uh, facilities and capacities to build more lightning. Because I think even they were like, well, crap, we didn't expect this many people to... Want a lightning. Uh, so anyways, so uh, let's see. G. Willikers, hey Mitchell, I've been toying with changing my two-door outer banks with Sasquatch to a non-Sasquatch Badlands. Uh, does it come with front and rear lockers? So that is a great question. That is actually what I did. So I wanted to go with a Badlands for the stabilizer bar disconnect, uh, but I really wanted the Sasquatch. And it, when I looked at it, I was like, okay, why do I want the Sasquatch? Okay, well, I want the stabilizer, or I want the, uh, the, the, the more aggressive gearing, the 4.7 gears. I wanted um, the, uh, the, better, um, uh, the, the better Bill Stein shocks, and I wanted the lockers in the front and rear. And what I realized is, okay, well, the Badlands comes with 4.46 or 4.6, yeah, 4.46 gearing for the factory. So 4.4 to 4.7 is not that big of a difference. So I can kind of fudge on that. Um, I still get my lockers in the front and the rear, and I still get Bill Steins. There you go. So I actually dropped Sasquatch for that reason because you still get your lockers on a Badlands, which I think is awesome. Um, all right, so Ralphie, man, thank you very much for the super chat. We appreciate that very, very much. Uh, if I have a 720 order, can I place it on hold for an Everglades? Absolutely, yes. That's exactly what you need to do. I don't know if your order's with us or with another dealer. doesn't matter. We love you and appreciate you being on the channel and being a part of our community. But you need to reach out to whoever your dealer is, and you need to ask them and verify that they put your priority code as a 99. So we talked about it earlier in the stream that a priority code 10 through 19 means it has the ability to potentially get scheduled for production. But if you put that priority code as a 99, that's us, the dealer's way of saying, Ford, do not build this vehicle. We're holding off for whatever reason. And so if you want an Everglades and you've got a 720 reservation, I would absolutely place that, that reservation or the order, place it as a priority code 99 if you want a chance at getting an Everglades. Uh, especially since, I know I've already talked about this, but our dealership is... Um, uh, our dealership is, I'm going through here and uh, trying to moderate these uh, comments as well, uh, especially since our dealership is honoring MSRP pricing on all Everglades, reservation and order holders at our dealership, um, all Everglades and all Bronco Raptors. We just feel like that's the right thing to do for these people, you guys that have been waiting so long to get your vehicle because it's, it's, it's not right. I, I really, It's not right, but it's also not Ford's fault. So, I mean, it's kind of like, just it's just a crappy situation. 
Um, let's see here. So I'm trying to go through all these uh, questions. Um, let's see here. Realistically, is it conceivable to get a fully loaded Badlands with Sasquatch within a year? Um, okay, so um, LB okay, so Moody, LB I'm, Moody going I'm going to assume that that is that without, that a, is reservation. without a reservation. And, and if you are if saying, you that, are it's saying that it's going to be a hard top, hard top, absolutely not. Absolutely it's guaranteed, not. It's guaranteed at 23. least. At least, um, if, it's um, top, if it's a soft top, fully loaded, Badlands fully loaded with Badlands with Sasquatch. Uh, uh, I don't like those. Chances. I don't like those I'm chances. Not gonna sit here I'm not going to sit here and be the pessimistic one because I'm naturally just too optimistic for my own good. But I would have a but I would have a sneaky suspicion that fully loaded, that fully loaded Badlands, Badlands Sasquatch, Sasquatch does not look good. For does not look good for you if you do not have a reservation. If you have a reservation, you have a chance. Got a chance. Uh, so it, it just uh, so it, it just depends. There's a lot of there's a lot of variables moving that I to, um, would need to, um, to actually to, to actually answer that question answer that accurately. question that accurately. If that makes any sense. Um, um, let's see here. Hopefully, let's see here. Hopefully, uh oh, uh -oh. I'm seeing a couple, seeing a couple things with Larry. My Larry, man, my with man, that super with chat. that super Thank chat. Thank you, dude. Thank you very very Thank much. You very very much for supporting the channel. We ordered we ordered my Badlands in December. Ford said it was an early reservation for 2022. It is a base and it is a base Badlands. Awesome. Congratulations. Awesome. Congratulations. Uh, I hope that is, uh, I hope that uh, is not a uh, question, not a and just, question a and just a statement. Um, um, Ford said it was a... Uh, Ford said it was a... Uh, sure I just want to make sure that uh, I can... We ordered my Badlands, uh, we ordered my Badlands Ford in December. Ford said it was an early reservation, reservation, early reservation for 22, and it is a base Badlands. Okay, so... Okay, so... Um, um, yes, congratulations. Yes, congratulations. Thank you very, 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 very much, much for support the support. And, um, I'm hearing some things, I'm that, hearing the some things that the is audio echoing, is echoing, so I'm not sure why that is. But let's see here. I, but let's see here. As long as, I, I, as, long as Josh, I, I, is long Josh is long gone, gone our, support our support guy, guy, guy so I'm on my own, and trust me, you don't want my ability to try and fix this thing myself. I don't have the end. So let's go ahead and do this. Since we're getting echoes, Thank Guys, you so much thank you so much for I'm watching this video. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up, right, right, here. Wrap it up right here. Thank you so very thank much, so for, very much for being a part of our channel. Part, thank you for being a part of our squad. Of our squad. We, we appreciate, you. We, appreciate you. we love you guys. If you have any and other, oh, have oh, any oh, other Dave question. Oh, oh, Dave chat, got a super so chat, so i got to get, I gotta get, I gotta get uh, to this. Does TCC have program power upgrades for the 2-3 Bronco? Not yet. Hopefully some are coming. There is a... Is it still delayed? Is it still delayed? I apologize. I apologize. Um, to answer your question, answer I might, your even, question, I might even put this well, in the so chat as well, so that way you guarantee, since you, guarantee since you left us a super chat, uh, there are going, uh, there to, be are going to be power some adder power adder options coming, coming uh, from Roush Performance, uh, from Roush performance and I think Whipple may, may even be working on something for the 2-3 as, well. so as well. It's going so to so be very interesting to hear with that. Guys, thank you so much Guys, thank you so much for watching this live stream. Thank you very, very much for being a part of our squad, part of our team. We love you guys, we appreciate you, and it just humbles me that anybody even wants to listen to this redneck at 6'3 from Alabama. So, so guys, thank you so, so, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And, uh, if, you and uh, if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe, sure to, the you subscribe to the channel. The bell, the bell notification turned on, turned on. So, you don't miss a single video. Peace. Peace.